there's a few coming in yet, so when they come in, we'll make room for all them guys. But we're excited that you joined us today. If this is your first time, we want to say welcome to you, and uh, glad you chose to join us. Now, there's some cool things that happened. I don't know if many of you got to come. Some of you did. I know I've seen some of you last uh, this Christmas Eve uh, service. We had over 400 people here, and uh, uh, we put $12,000 more towards our goal. Amen. That was cool. So this, I haven't heard the tally today at all. I know that we've had two other services, and they've been great. And uh, we're hoping to hit that. I think we need about $13,000 more to hit the $100,000 mark. And this is our final chance to do that this morning. But there's still no pressure. Uh, I just believe that it's, equal gi- it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. And God will take whatever we get and he'll multiply it. And uh, I'm going to tell you, where we are, I think we were $87,000 or something like that this morning. That's already amazing. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. And so we're already actively doing ministry all around the globe, even today as we speak. We've had teams over in Kentucky. We've had teams in Puerto Rico. We've got people going to Puerto Rico in less than six weeks, and it's going to be a good time. If you would like to go to Puerto Rico with me in February, I still have a few openings. And so if you'd like to go, come see me. We'll be having our first meeting the first week of January, and uh, we'll probably be buying tickets that day. Somebody said, well, how much does it cost, Pastor? It's about 1000 bucks a person. Uh, but we're going to do so much ministry and win so many people to Jesus. So I would love for you to go and be a part of that if you can as well. Uh, I'm trying to remember. That's, that's, I think, a good part of everything. And I'll share some more with you as we get going. We've got uh, uh, one of our small groups. If you haven't got to be a part of a small group yet, it's a way to get to know other folks in our church. And those will be starting back up about the middle of January. So if you're interested in getting in a small group, let me know. We do have one that meets here every Wednesday night at 630. It's a good place to start if you haven't got to be a part of a home group yet. And then another, I have a new home group, I believe, that will be starting in Sedalia this next semester. And in those small groups, we get together and we do Bible study together and we worship God together again during the week. Because if you're like me, one time a week ain't enough. Amen? And uh, so we like to do that. But we have a small group that did something significant this year and we want you to know about it. And so we're going to share that news in just a moment. Y'all stand with me. Let's pray as we get started worshiping God together. God, I love you and I thank you and I praise you for your blessings this day, for the opportunity of being in your house, God, to be used by you. Father, we thank you for all that you have done and all that you are doing. God, I pray today that you'd help us to rightly divide your truth, that God, you'd help us be a people that just grow to be more like you in your image. And and God, in your love. God, I love you, and God, I thank you, and I praise you for this day. And it's in your name we do pray. Amen. Now we're on and free 
We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're on and free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house.
hear the angels sing there's hope for everyone to announce our king there's hope for everyone what good news they bring there's hope for everyone angels sing there's hope for everyone they came from afar there's hope for everyone wise men saw the star there's hope for everyone shepherds heard the choir there's hope for everyone from afar there's hope for everyone we are waiting on the promise for the one who lights the darkness Bending low to be among us Bring your glory in the highest Jesus, come let us adore There's hope for everyone on the manger floor There's hope for everyone What are you waiting for? There's hope for everyone
Welcome, I'm the Christmas search engine, and I can help you find anything related to- DIY Christmas decorations. Oh, okay, um, let's jump right in, here we go. <laughs> what date Christmas this year? Uh, December 25th. What date Christmas next year? December 25th. Song that goes. Um, I think I know what you're looking for. How cook ham. Okay. How cook ham fast. Uh. Oh, ham flamethrower recipe. Wait, what? Christmas present mom. Nice. Cheap. Nice. What day Christmas 2035? Are you serious? Is Santa Claus real? Uh, you should maybe ask your parents about that. Gift wrap bowling ball. Please be careful. Custom dog Christmas. Sorry, what? Christmas dog custom cute. Oh, you mean costume? Christmas dog costume cute! Gift wrap accordion. Uh, that's gonna be tricky. <laughs> Can I drink expired eggnog? No. What happens if drank expired eggnog? Why'd you even ask me in the first place? Dealing with relatives. Okay. Dealing with nosy relatives. Oh, uh, well. Dealing with my nosy, overbearing relatives who won't stay out of my business. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same stuff. <laughs> Gift wrap a saddle. Who are you buying this stuff for? Santa Claus riding a unicorn. Santa Claus riding a unicorn socks. Is that a thing? Search it up. Oh wow, here they are. Take my money. Norwegian tree skirts. How many lights, one outlet? Elf pajamas. Dog singing Christmas carols. <sighs> oh, hello. What is Christmas really about? <laughs> I've got just the thing. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So, Jesus? <laughs> Jesus. May I? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Huh. How fix burnt ham? Okay. Uh, you know what? Forget it. Pizza delivery Christmas Eve. <laughs> no problem. Maybe you feel like that today, amen? Mr. Ever Bohan's going to make his way up here. Oh, go on. <laughs> Hi. Rusty wanted me to tell a little bit about uh, what we've done. We've been hosting a small group in our home for over a year now. But about uh, six months ago, we went through a Bible study. Uh, something's got to change. And it was a, a guy trekking through the Himalayas. It's a great backdrop and, and dealing with the, uh, the different culture and how to uh, bring Jesus Christ to them. And Rusty, we, him and I were talking about it. And he, man, he, he, he wants to go to the Himalayas and do a Bible study on that. But, uh, you know, that's kind of expensive. And, you know, south of Coal Camp, they're not quite as pristine as the Himalayas. But, you know, hey, it worked. But... Uh, in, in that Bible study, uh, something's got to change. It kind of sparked an interest in me. So uh, as a small group, we started collecting our change, you know, what we take out of our pocket every day and, and throw on the nightstand or on a dresser or whatever. And uh, so we started changing it, uh, started collecting that change. And every week at the Bible study, there would be somebody would drop in, you know, a few pennies, nickels, dimes. And this is seed for next year, by the way. Uh, but uh, so we you, know, you just wonder what, what a few pennies, a few dimes make, make a difference. But uh, in, the, in the course of six months, and Christy is one of our uh, the gals that attends our, that's in this service. But uh, I think we, in the 8 o'clock service, uh, we actually presented this check to, uh, there's a lady here that uh, supports a ministry in uh, Haiti of an orphanage. And they've got 41 kids at this orphanage. 
and uh, you know, they're really struggling. And but for years they've supported this uh, this orphanage down there. So we, as a group, decided that the funds that we collected, we would uh, give to her to support that orphanage. And uh, in the course of six months, with our spare change, we collected over five hundred dollars, or right at five hundred dollars. Amen. So we, we presented that this morning in the first service, and Rusty asked if I would uh, share that with everybody, that uh, just with, with the things that, you know, uh, the trivial things that we take for granted, they can all add up uh, for God's service. So. And we felt like if a small group in our church could do that, the rest of us could combine and do that. So we gave another $500, and we're sending $1,000 to Haiti all together. So that's amazing. Uh, We've got to send shoes. We've got to send socks. We've uh, sent uh, a team there to do medical stuff. Uh, my wife, Angie, got to go on that a, f- a few years ago. And so it's been really a cool uh, experience to get to watch and to know these people. And actually, uh, the lady that runs the orphanage has been to our church twice now, I believe, uh, maybe even three. Her name is Dina. And Dina has come here and visited us and shared about the orphanage and those kind of things. Just amazing to get to see what God has done. I was telling uh, last service, they eat beans and rice most of the time. And when Angie got to go down, they went and bought bread and they made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the kids. That's like a delicacy. Um, bread is very high in Haiti. It costs a lot of money uh, for a loaf of bread. And, and I don't even remember what. I would get it wrong if I tried to tell you how much it cost for a loaf of bread. Uh, so I think they were telling me like a dollar a piece. Um, and so put that in perspective, and they can't afford that every day anyway. And so this $1,000 is going to go a long ways in Haiti. It will help so much. And uh, if you see our shirts that are out in the lobby that talk about Haiti on them, all the proceeds, when you buy one of those shirts at the coffee shop, it will go toward Haiti. And we want to keep uh, supporting that ministry as well. It's a great effort. God's doing some amazing things, and people are being saved through that and through your generosity. So thank you all again. And, uh, you know, he was talking. I, I thought, man, how perfect is that to lead into leftovers, right? This leftover change goes so far. Um, but sometimes uh, leftovers, uh, you know, I, I can eat them for a while. How about you guys? Anybody have any leftovers after yesterday? Yeah, our family did. We, we had some leftovers. Um, we also had leftovers that we ate yesterday. Uh, we went to the Cold Camp Music Boosters thing, um, and they had some amazing meat, and we bought a couple bags of meat, and so we warmed them back up. And when we got done eating on that, that meat, by the way, I mean, if you could liquidize smoke and drink it, this stuff is amazing. You know what I'm saying? It makes my mouth water thinking about it right now. I mean, bandanas should be full when we walk out of this place. But, but I was, I was, uh, I love it. And we got done with it, though, and there was just a little left. And Angie's mom said, you know, you can freeze that. And I thought we just did, like before we ate it this time. How many times is it safe to do that? Like, I don't know. At some point, I got to be done with the leftovers, It reminds me that sometimes in my life, in order to get over the past, I don't know about you, but we all have baggage. We come into our marriage relationships. We come into other relationships. We carry baggage along with us, and it's not healthy to carry that baggage. But but what sometimes happens is we keep that baggage all built up, built up, built up, built up, until it just explodes on us, and it's a big mess. And so I like to tell people that sometimes it's okay for us just to go deal with the baggage, pack it back up, bury it, never to bring it up again, and move on because our past helps us to become who God created us to be now. Y'all with me? There was a young man named John. He received a parrot as a gift. The parrot had a bad attitude and even worse, uh, a bad vocabulary. Every word out of the parrot, the bird's mouth was rude, obnoxious, and laced with profanity. John tried and tried to change the bird's attitude by consistently saying only polite words, playing soft music, and anything else that he could think of to clean up the bird's vocabulary. Finally, John was fed up and he yelled at the parrot and the parrot yelled back. John shook the parrot and the parrot got a- angrier and even ruder. John, in desperation, threw up his hands, grabbed the bird, and put him in the freezer. For a few minutes, the parrot squawked, it kicked, it screamed. Then suddenly there was total quiet. Not a peep was heard for over a minute. Fearing that he had hurt the the parrot, John quickly opened the door of the freezer, and the parrot calmly stepped out onto John's arm. 
Herod said, I believe I may have offended you with my rude language and actions. I'm sincerely remorseful for my inappropriate transgressions, and I fully intend to do everything I can to correct my rude and unforgivable behavior. John was stunned at the change in the bird's attitude. He was about to ask the parrot what had made such a dramatic change in his behavior, and the bird continued, may I ask what the turkey do? You see, dealing with our past helps us to really live now. If you've got your Bibles opened up to Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 1, just 11 verses this morning, and here's, where, here's what they say. If you don't have your Bible, you can watch with me on the board here. Since then, Paul says, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is adultery. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self with its being renewed in knowledge and in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. First thing on your listing, God, I want you to see is that to deal with our past, we need to look up. There was a dad and a son that were driving down the road, a county road, and they saw a watermelon patch just a little ways off the road. And the father told his son, he says, keep a lookout while I go over and get us a melon. So he snuck into the patch and he took a melon and he called to the boy, is anyone coming? Look both ways. The boy wisely responded, but dad, should we look up too? The up look will certainly improve the outlook. Keep your eyes on Jesus, in other words. Colossians 3, 5 through 9 reminds us to put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. You see, sometimes in our past, that past just keeps coming up. I've heard people say, you know, if Jesus forgets our sin, as far as the east is from the west, but that sin just keeps coming up in our mind, who do you think keeps reminding you of it? It ain't Jesus, is it? Why? Because the devil doesn't want us to know that we have any usefulness to God. The devil wants to lure us back to the old things that made us grow weak in our knees. But Paul's trying to help us here. He's saying, listen, there are some things. I mean, there is some usefulness to say, hey, listen, I love the testimonies I hear about people that tell me, man, I used to have a drug problem and, and God has freed me from it. Or I used to be an alcoholic and God has freed me. He has set me free. I used to be uh, mean to my husband or I used to be mean to my wife, but God has changed my heart. God has made me, 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 made me new and, and God's doing this thing in me and to watch the transformation that happens and how God sets us free from sin. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. He goes on and gives us some uh, uh, illustrations of that. He says sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires. Like that would cover everything, wouldn't it? And greed, which is adultery. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You, you used to walk in these ways in the life that you once lived. But now you must also rid yourselves of such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken your old self, uh, since you have taken off your old self with its practices. In other words, take the next step in your walk with Jesus. Remember Philippians 1, 6 says that he who began a good work in you is faithful and just to complete it. In other words, this ongoing work is happening. Uh, Jesus is changing us. He's working things out. He's servicing new things in our life so that we become more and more like him. Yes, this was our old way. Yes, there's value in remembering that. But there's more value in seeing how God wants to change me, how he wants to make me. Man, I'm going to tell you, I've met people that used to just be crazy with fits of rage. Used to be just their fuse was quick, 
right? And in just a moment, they, they would just spew out there all these things. But now God is beginning to work on them. Some of you are all elbowing somebody next to you going, boy, I wish God would work on you. <laughs> Listen up. He's talking to you this morning. There's an ongoing work that's taking place in this walk with Jesus. It's like somebody saying to us, grow up. I mean, growing up is a part of life. I don't do the same things now that I did when I was five. Well, some things. I mean, like I should grow up often, right? Like, like when I don't get my way at home, I should quit throwing temper tantrums. They don't look like they used to. I've grown up a little bit. I don't lay on the ground and kick my feet and beat my hands. I just get quiet. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, everything okay? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm good. She's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Do you want some cookies? Mm-mm. You know it's bad when I say no to cookies. Right? We got to grow up. We got to get over that stuff. We got to move on because God's got bigger things. Listen, it's not about me. Here's what he says in 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3. Therefore, rid yourselves of all kind of malice and all kinds of deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. Look at it with me. So that by it you may what? You might grow up. You might grow up in your salvation. Man, I'm going to tell you, I've met people throughout my life uh, that gave their life to Jesus, and that was the extent of their relationship with God. They remember the day they come to know Jesus. They said, God, I surrender all. But did they really surrender all? Because there's been no more spiritual growth along with it. You see, God called us as believers to go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Not go ye therefore and save everybody, which I pray that God does rescue and save salvation. But God wants us to be his disciples. That means Christ followers. That means look like him. Be like him. Love like him. To deal with the past, we not only need to look up, we need to look in. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10 says it like this, and, and, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. The new self. I'm looking in for 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 21 through 22. Now it is God who makes both of us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. He's set his seal of ownership on us. He put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. I tell everybody, if you unzip me, that's why I'm so big. If you unzip me, you find Jesus on the inside. He's in here. I mean, for two, he's here. I'm going to look in because what I see is God's reflection now. He's transformed me. Now, on the outside, when I gave my life to Jesus, you know, we live in the show me state. And some people needed to, like, see some action to see that it's real, right? Like, sure, you got saved. Right. Oh, you're going to quit cussing now, hmm? We'll see about that. Oh, you're going to go to church regularly now? Oh, we'll see about that. Sure, you gave your life to Jesus, right? Right. You see, on the outside, there's a work that's being done, but on the inside, Jesus immediately changed me. I am a changed creation on the inside. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I hope I change on the outside and you see it, but more importantly, Jesus already did something on the inside. Amen? Listen, some of you are here today, and you still got to work on the cussing thing. Some of you are here today, and you still got to work on the being nice thing. Some of you are here, and there's something that work God's doing out here that, that needs to transpire so other people will see it. But I'm going to tell you, praise the Lord, we don't have to get all cleaned up before he saves us. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, 13 through 14 says, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, with the promised Holy Spirit. When you believed, you were changed. Man, I 
know about you. I, I know that outside, I can't look at me outside, but I can look on the inside. I can see Jesus. And I know that there's a Holy Spirit that's convicted me. I tell people I don't believe in uh, a guilty conscience. I believe in the conviction of the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus sounds like. It ain't loud. It's just a still small voice. He's talking to me on the inside. He's changing me. Praise God. Revelation 20, 11 through 15. I love this. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it, earth and, and the heavens, they fled from his presence and there was no room for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. Man, it's singular, the book of life. The, the plural books, it's two different places. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, the death, and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death, and anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life, they were thrown into the lake of fire. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. The good news is, if, you, if you've given your life to Jesus, your name, the Bible says, is written in the book of life. It's not in the books anymore. It's been removed from the books. It took way more books because everything anyone had ever done was recorded in the books. But when you and I gave our life to Jesus and he said, I forgive you, he erased them out of the books and he put your name in the book. Isn't that glory? I love this. I read it on Facebook here a while back. Somebody else had it on there. When the devil brings up your past, reminding that Jesus dropped the charges. Isn't that a great saying? You could actually say, I'm a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away or be still. My past is redeemed. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, small planet, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame vision, mundane talking, cheap living and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, tops, recognized, praised, regarded or rewarded. I now live by faith, lean on, the, on his presence, walk by patience, live by prayer and labor by his power. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way rough, my companions few, my guide reliable, my mission clear. I cannot be bought, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity, negotiate at the table of enemies, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up until I've stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and preached up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach till I know, uh, till, till all know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes for his own, he will have no problem recognizing me. To deal with my past, I not only need to look up, I not only need to look in, but I need to live it out. I need to live it out. Yes, God's changed me. Now let's show people how God changed me. Yes, God loves me. Let me show people how God loves me by loving them. Galatians 2.20, Paul says it like this. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Was he talking about physical death? No, he was talking about a spiritual death. He died to his old way of life, and now he's living a new life in Jesus. He goes on to say it like this. I live by faith. The, the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, and he gave himself for me. I underline it. Just think about these. Ponder these words for a second in your own heart. The life I now live. Is this true about you? I live by faith in the Son of God. He gave himself for me. I live my life. By faith in the Son of God who gave himself for my life is now, I live it so that other people will know who Jesus is. Live now. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, uh, that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. But Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it to the abundance, to the full. To really live, to really know your purpose on the planet, to really understand and to grasp that God loves you and he wants to speak through you to others. 
but Rusty, I'm not a preacher, but Rusty, I, I don't have good words, but Rusty, I can't form and put sentences together. I, I, Rusty, I don't know what to, where to even start or how to start the conversation. I want you to know God wants to use you. You just got to open up and by faith put yourself out there. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. The the word faith, F-A-I-T-H, it can stand for forsaking all, I trust him. That's me taking my hand of faith, putting in God's hand of faith and walking beside him as he's my heavenly father saying, God, I don't know. I I don't know where I should work. I don't know where I should go. I don't know who I should be with. I don't know what the next, I don't, there's somebody that I got to deal with and I don't know if I should deal with it today or deal with it tomorrow, but God, you got to go with me and God says, I'm with you. Live now by faith. Live now in Jesus. John 15, 9 through 12. Here's what he says that if we live in Jesus, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy will be in you and that your joy will be complete. My command is simple. It's this, to love each other as I have loved you. If you love each other, he says another way, by this all men will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Man, you want to have some joy? Did you know it's hard to be mad at somebody and carry a grudge? You got to work at it. You say, oh, not me, preacher. You don't know what they did to me. I get it. I've had tough stuff happen to me too, friend, but I'm going to tell you something. When you hold a grudge, it's more, it hurts you more than it does them. They ain't even thinking about you. Y'all with me? God wants to free us. It's so freeing. The Bible says, cast your cares on the Lord, for he cares for you. He loves you. And he wants you to experience joy that surpasses all understanding. I love S.M. Lockridge. Man, he lived out this this blessed assurance, this blessed joy of God. He he was describing God in this sermon. and, And here's what he said. I hope I can do it justice. Some of you have heard this before, but it's so amazing. The words and how he flows together, what he writes about the Lord. And, and when we experience the joy, when we live it out, these kind of things come from the flow. This comes, the Bible says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. Listen to what S.M. Lockridge said. The Bible says, my king is a seven-way king. He's the king of the Jews. That's a racial king. He's the king of Israel. That's a national king. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. Well, I wonder, do you know him? David said, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament show his handiwork. My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. No far-seeing telescope can bring into visibility the coastline of his shoreless supply. No barrier can hinder him from pouring out his blessings. He's enduringly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's the center savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He stands in solitude of himself. He's awesome. He's unique. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He is the supreme problem in higher criticism. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the cardinal necessity of spiritual religion. He's the miracle of the age. He's the superlative of everything good that you choose to call him. He's the one and only qualified to be the all-sufficient Savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and he sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the leopard. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him well. My king uh, is the king. He's the key to knowledge. He's the wellspring to wisdom. He's 
He's the doorway to deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him well? My, his office, his awesome office is manifold. His promise is sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteousness. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. I wish I could describe him to you, but he's indescribable well. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind and you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him and the witnesses couldn't get their testimonies to agree. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah, that's my king. That's my king. Father, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever. How long is that? And when you get through with all the forevers, then amen and amen. 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 Mm. See, dealing with your past, it helps us to look up, it helps us to look in, and it helps us to live out the life Jesus gave us. I want to say this, your next step, you're not your leftovers. You are made new. You're not the plan B, you're Jesus' plan A. He's called you. Rejoice in that truth. Invite somebody this next week to come with you to church the first Sunday in January 2022. You see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And you and I know they're going to hear the Word of God. I want to see lives changed. God called us to be the church. He said, he looked at Peter, he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm going to tell you something, God does ministry through you and you're the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Do you know 87% of the people you invite will come? Let's do it, amen? Let's win people to Jesus. Lord, I love you. And God, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you that we're not leftovers. God, we're what you intended. God, I pray that you'd help us deal with our past so that, God, we can look to the future. That we can be led by you and used by you. God, you are so good. God, I pray for your forgiveness in our lives. Draw us close to you this morning. And it's in your name we do pray. Amen. If you're new to us, what we do is an invitation at this time. You can stand with us. It's a chance for you to respond to the Lord. If you want to come and pray, we want to pray with you. Maybe you have some need. Maybe you'd like to give your life to Jesus. Maybe you'd like to trust him. Say, God, if you could take some of this mess I've made out of life, here it is, it's yours. Man, the greatest gift you'll ever receive is the gift of Jesus. He's life-changing. He's eternal life-changing, amen? You come as God leads you right now. We want to pray with you right now. You come. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, Thy birth, Jesus.
take an offering at this time. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us, Lord. Just, just be with us, be with this offering and multiply it in your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lots of things going on, folks. Uh, if you don't have a listening guide, make sure you pick up one because the notes are on the back side of that. Our next starting point class is uh, January the 16th during the second service. Uh, sign up in the, uh, in the cafe, and uh, we'd love to have you be part of what we're doing here if you're not a member of our church and, and just a way to get connected and, and learn about how you can serve here. Our holiday din dinner is January the 19th. It'll be after the 11 o'clock service. So the 9th, sorry, Woo. the 9th. Wow. That would have messed up, wouldn't it? All right, so two weeks out, January the 9th, we're having our annual holiday dinner. And meat and potatoes and all that stuff, sides are all provided. All we're just asking is if you bring a dessert. John John likes cheesecake with blueberries, and Rusty, I think, likes cherries. So whichever you do on that, that's great. But, uh, but uh, that'll be after the 11 o'clock service. So if you attend the first or second service, come back after the 11 o'clock. And, uh, and share with us. Youth group starts back up uh, January the 16th at 6.30. That's ages 7th grade through 12th grade. We have that uh, on Sunday evening here at the church. And then uh, I did get uh, mentioned during the first service, and I'll mention it in all of them, that uh, we do have listening impaired equipment to help with somebody that has a listening issue. And uh, just don't let that hinder somebody that you know from coming if they don't think they're going to be able to, to understand and hear the service. But we have that provided, and we'll just get with Scott in the, in the sound booth, and he'll get you hooked up with that. But uh, is there anything else that I'm forgetting, folks? Let's have a great day. Lord, we love you. We thank you for the many blessings that you've given us, Lord. Be with us this week and bring us back next week. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.